but thanks be unto God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. There's only one thing Jesus wants to give you is victory in every area of your life. Something good, something good, something good. Welcome to World Harvest Church. Welcome to World Harvest Church. Bienvenidos a la Iglesia World Harvest.
want it all And death has met defeat You have won the victory
I think it's because Ben has a new bass. <laughs> Just want to welcome everyone. Sunday morning, time to be with family. So good to see everyone. So good to have everyone logged in and joining with us this morning. And if you're in the house this morning and you're a guest with us, we would love to know about that. In the seat pocket in front of you, there's a card that says, I'm new here on it. If you wouldn't mind taking that card out, put your information on there. That way we'll have a record of your visit. You can stop at the guest center right to the left of the sanctuary or go back to our guest reception after service if you have a few minutes to spend with us. And we have a gift that we would love to give you just for being with us here today. So welcome, everybody. Hallelujah. Um, we've got some great things coming up as we're coming into 2021. We're going to be starting our small groups again. Yay, yay, starting next Sunday, 
Um, our groups will be in full swing. The, uh, the, group, the groups that are not this week, but the next week, we'll be talking about next Sunday sermon. If you are not in a small group, we can help you find a small group. So you can call the church. You can stop at the small group table right back here, pick up a brochure, or go online, and you can see what small groups are in your area. And then next Sunday, we have a, a new Sunday school class called Keys to the Kingdom, taught by Julie Mir. And I think that is a six-week class. It is at 11 a.m. I, I said 9 o'clock in the first service. But um, just you can go online and register for that, or you can just show up um, next, next week at that class. And last but not least, our encounter spiritual weekend is coming up the first weekend of March. It is Thursday night, Friday, and Saturday. The $250 includes your hotel and includes lots of food. You will not starve on the retreat. It's a great opportunity for you to draw closer to God for 2021. You can get information for that, again, in the lobby or online. Amen. Pastor Merrick, come on up. Oh, and... I forgot. Thanks for reminding me. I love the front row. Um, high schoolers, you can go ahead and be dismissed to your class. Follow Justin and uh, go have a great time. Amen. Oh, let's clap for the high schoolers. Praise the Lord. We thank God for the high schoolers. Hallelujah. Uh, we want to take a moment here. First of all, I want to recognize a great job on the mission school on Saturday. We had 97 people attend. It's tremendous, tremendous. Navita did a great job and just a great, uh, a lot of teachers. And then um, we are entering into, um, well, we are into the Black History Month. And I believe the church, yeah, you can shout, huh? hallelujah. Uh, we had a board out there last weekend, which listed in the, in the lobby some of the African-American highlights of people that have done great things, but our history books never capture them. We've got another four, which pretty soon we're going to have Kim come up and just share. But before she does, I just want to say a few things. The church of Jesus Christ must be the catalyst to bring peace. Amen. It's just the way it is. Especially uh, between the races, we are a cross-cultural church. And you have to stretch a bit. Amen. You've got to be able to take in new things uh, and not get touchy. Amen. That's just the way it is. Uh, and, we, and I want to say this up front. I've never said it from the pulpit. What happened at the, at the Capitol building a few weeks ago was appalling. Especially when people carry Christian memorabilia flags and they somehow that Jesus is part of this. No, Jesus is not part of lawlessness. Does that make sense? On both sides of the camp, like some of the other stuff we've seen this last year was also lawlessness. We don't buy into any lawlessness. But at the same time, we got to realize that we got to pray for people that may be perceived enemies in your heart. Well, they're an enemy, they're an enemy, they're like this. Well, what are you going to do? You're going to live tore up from the floor up? You can't live that way. You got to pray for the enemies. You got to love people. You got to forgive people. Let me tell you this that's the way it's got to be. And, um, and I want to say something because I believe it's important that we make steps. And now some people accuse me, all you do is talk. No, talk is important. I mean, everything starts with an idea. I mean, you could blame Jesus for that. All he did was talk. Well, his talk changed the world. Because he backed it up with action. But, but let me just say this. It's important. So I want to do a, um, a tour the last weekend of this month, which is a Saturday. And we already checked with the Civil Rights Museum downtown. We did it once before. About 125 people show up. But that was when they offered it for free. And they offered it at no limits. Now they've got all kinds of restrictions. It's $16 a person. And they can only do it 25 at a time. That's the COVID is. COVID stuff. 16. One six. But here's what I'm going to do. The first... But, 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 but I want to make a, I love my African-American brothers and sisters. The last time we did this, we had a preponderance of African-American people show up, which is wonderful because when you go through it, you, I promise you, you cannot go through that museum without being touched. Well, I know what happened to civil rights. No, you think you know. But I need some of my white people to show up. 
I don't need a smattering of whites. Can I just say something there? Uh, we need to have a joint effort there. But the first bus, we may have two, I'm paying for. If you, if you show up, I will pay for it. But then we got to sign up because and I will have someone figure this all out for me. I just make decrees and they figure it out. <laughs> we're going to do this. <laughs> How are we going to do that? Well, that's why I pay you. Praise God. <laughs> so I may do two buses, three buses, do it in a half hours. You know, but, you know, we'll work it out. But I think it's good for us to make it part of our tradition. It's a way of learning because what happens to, especially white people, you gain an empathy and an understanding of a viewpoint that you may just kind of gloss over. Amen. Amen. And it's not a gloss over from African American people. A lot of them have lived it. It's not a gloss over. So can we work towards this and be, the Bible says, blessed are the peacemakers for they should be called the sons of God. Amen. We need to be peacemakers. Yeah. Amen. Well, I don't want to agree. Listen, I don't pretend we can agree with everything. But can we not make an effort for the sake of Christ? And let me tell you this. If the body of Christ can't even get it together, there's no hope for the world. And we got Jesus. We got forgiveness. We got the blood. And really, we're kingdom people first. So there's no reason for us not to be participation in this great event. Amen? So put your hands together for Kim Owens. She's our own staff. Come on over here, Kim. Okay, Kim, so we've got some examples if you researched. Hello, people. Of African Americans who are missionaries. Yeah, it's Mission uh, Sunday. Right out of slavery. Amazing stories. Yes, it is. I did the best I could in the first service. I heard you rocked it, Pastor. I don't know about that. High five. But go ahead, help yourself. So, good morning. Good morning, church. Good morning, family. This has been exciting. Traditionally, in World Harvest Church, we do a video, and it's shown one Sunday in the month. And if you're not at church, you miss it. Yeah. So I proposed, I said, why don't we do something that's a little bit different? Why don't we educate people on the contributions of black Americans in everyday life? So last week we started, amen, that gets a good cut. So last week we started with things that you use every day, traffic lights, the filament of your, um, of your light bulb, you know, and I, I, you know, I know some of the names, but I'm not going to misname them right now, but you could have, I can put them back out there. But everyday life, things that happen that we don't know. Because we have American history, and black Americans are part of that history, but they're neglected in the schools. You don't get enough. You get to traditionals, the usual suspects, Harriet Tubman, Frederick Douglass, and uh, Martin Luther King. But we know about those. What about the people who didn't get that um, information, that didn't get that accolade, you know? And so my job was to just put something out every single week. So it's going to be out there. Don't just walk past it. Oh, yes, yeah, the same thing as we did last week. No, it's new every single week. So I want you guys to be educated because even though I live my whole life as a black American, there is some stuff that I didn't even know. So this was a learning experience for me, too. So you're not too, it's not too late to learn, and you never stop learning. So it's Mission Sunday, and I found a couple of things. There was a gentleman named George Lyle. He was born in 1750. He was the first... African American or black American, whatever you want to call it. Okay, um, put it on the screen, guys. Yes, George Lyle. He was the first African American to go to Africa as a missionary. First one. He was, he was um, ordained as a missionary, and he, and he was in the Savannah area. But, you know, it was around the Revolution. Yeah, give us the American dates. 1750 to 1828 is when he died. I'm just saying. So... Um, he left free in 1778. So the three people that we're highlighting today, they were all born slaves. They either bought their freedom or they were free, and they went on to do amazing things for the kingdom. They did not yeah. let their enslavement stop them. So what excuse do we have? Come on Just now. saying, I'm going to let that mic drop. So in order to evacuate others, he got his freedom, and he left, and he went with others, and he paid the debt, and he went on to the island, Okay. So he preached, he baptized hundreds, organized them into congregations, and his legacy is in Africa today. 8,000, I'm sorry, he went to Jamaica. 8,000 Baptists in Jamaica. The first one to go out. And then we're not going to leave the women behind. Her name was Betsy Stockton. Betsy was amazing. She was also born into slavery. But she was born in New Jersey, and she became a domestic slave to the then president of the New Jersey, the College of New Jersey. His name was um, Ashbel Green. 
Do you know what um, College of New Jersey is now known as? Princeton. Princeton University. My nephew just graduated from Princeton two years ago. Do you know that all the Ivy League schools started as Christian universities? Yes. See how far they removed. Let's get them back where they belong and yes. back to their roots. Amen? So she felt God's conviction. She said she needed to do something. She wanted to go to Africa because she got touched by the gospel when she was going to church. But she went to Hawaii first. Now, remember, she was born in 1798. Hawaii was not a state, people. Okay, just want you to know that. Hawaii wasn't a state yet. Okay. So she went to, new, she went to the new um, places. And she, um, they were required to pay for their trip. Sound familiar? Just saying, it started, pastor didn't start it, he just followed the those who came before him. Pay for your trip if you're going on a mission trip, okay? So she saved her wages, and her bosses or her owners also helped her, and she went to Hawaii, and she preached the gospel to the natives there, and she taught them English, she taught them algebra. Algebra, my brain can't even say the word algebra because it makes my brain hurt, okay? Latin, the only thing I remember from Latin is, is, is jingle bells. I learned Latin and I was in sixth grade. But English, Latin, history, she taught those to the natives of Hawaii. Can you give her an amen? amen? So she died in 1865, but she was the first single black woman to go out to the world and preach the gospel. And then the last one, his name was, uh, was, was, um, Carey, was Lot Carey. He was the first African-American missionary to Africa. And he was born in Virginia. And um, unlike most slave families, he was able to stay with his family. And so um, he was converted at the First Baptist Church after hearing a sermon about Nicodemus. Imagine that. After a short time of working, he bought his freedom. And he was called. He left and he went into Africa and he preached the gospel to those people on, in, that, in, in there. So he took his whole family and they established an African mission. And so his legacy includes American Christians of all races taking the gospel through the continent of Africa. Can you say an amen? Come on. So I want you guys to get excited about the things that are happening. Go out there, visit the mission table. Go out there and visit the Afri I mean, the black history makers because it doesn't take a month to set aside, you know, history because it's American history. And I just want you guys to educate yourself. We hear stuff in high, in, in high school. Let's hear about the stuff that we don't learn, that they're taking out of the schools. And so just get behind your educators. Amen. God bless you guys. Thank you. Right, let's give her a hand. Uh, thank you, Kim. Uh, Kim, thank you for putting that together. You did a great job. Thank you, sir. We're proud of you. Yes. Um, I do want to let you know we have a book out there by David Barton. It's American Hidden in Black. It's black and white. It's all the American heroes that are African American starting from even before the Civil War. And uh, I mean the Revolutionary War. And it's right here along with the video. And they're available to you. But educate yourself. Yeah. Catch yourself up to speed of really what the real story is about. Now let me tell you what. Why don't you stay here. Okay. I just feel led to do this. Take this. <laughs> And we're going to receive Holy Communion right now. And if you don't have a communion cup, I want you to raise your hand. We're going to give you one. Holy Communion. And uh, give me if I have one more. Thank you. You can take it up here with me. Uh, and we want to go to God. Uh, and in the fracturedness of our society, we want to bring healing. And it begins with us. Amen. Uh, we need to forgive all those we feel like are perpetrating wrong in our nation, whatever stripe you are, we need to forgive. We need to release. And the brokenness in our nation can begin to be healed with the healing with our own life because Jesus came to heal the brokenhearted. And a lot of people are hurting out there, but Jesus can heal you. And he can begin right here today. Great job, Sister Kim. And uh, I appreciate the effort. Does anyone not have a cup yet? You'll raise your hand. Are we all good? All right. I won't just take this bread of the wafer in your hand. And um, I want you to pray for the healing of this nation, racial reconciliation, and the healing of the people of God as we partake of this. Heavenly Father, we just thank you that you're such a good God, that you created all of our people, the human race, in your image. Lord, we just thank you that you're healing our land because you said that if your people should repent, turn from them wicked ways, and you would heal their land. And so, Father, right now, we repent. 
We repent from our wrong thinkings. We repent from our prejudice. We repent from our, preju- our, 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 our biases. We repent from our racism. Whatever hidden things are in our heart, Father, I ask that you dig them out right now. Yes. Even those who would say that they don't have any ought in their heart, Father, there is something there. If you are separated from your brother, you are, you've got some ought. And so we ask, Lord, that you reveal it to them right now in your gentle and precious way. Father, we just thank you that you're touching hearts right now, that you're healing this land, that the body of Christ shall rise up in the mighty name of Jesus and proclaim your word over this nation and America shall be saved once again. We shall have revival in this city. We shall have revival in this state. It shall permeate the entire nation and all peoples will come together as the lovers of Christ in the mighty name of Jesus. But first, Father, we take it to the streets. We take it outside that we will be the light, Father, that we would lead by example and that we would show the love of Christ to all nations, to all peoples, to all um, to all folks who are around us, Father. So we thank you, Lord, that you're healing our land, that we're giving, we're getting forgiveness for all that's in our hearts, and that we are loving you and showing the light of Christ through all who believe. So we thank you, Father, in Jesus' mighty name, as we take of the bread. Let's partake. Amen. Thank you. Mm. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for healing hearts, Jesus. Oh, Lord, we thank you that the power of God is released through the communion table of the Lord. And as we prepare to partake of the blood, we put the blood of Christ upon us. And, Father, you told us that if we are to receive forgiveness, we must give forgiveness. And so, Father, we want to be real transparent with you. Help us take a minute just to reflect in our own heart. And Holy Spirit, just prompt us, people or groups of people we need to forgive. That we need to release members of our family, members of our, of our leadership in our nation, whatever area it is. Lord, we want to forgive everybody. So we take a minute right now to reflect and just release those that you need to forgive. Father, we choose to forgive. As you have forgiven us, we forgive. And we apply the blood of Christ upon our lives today. Heal our hearts, Lord. Set us free to love like you love. Help us to be peacemakers. Help us to see the good, believe for the best. We believe, Lord, that supernatural power is being released We receive it in our physical bodies, in our spirits, in our minds, in our emotions. We receive your washing, your cleansing, and your healing. In Jesus' name, let's partake. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Well, isn't Jesus wonderful? Praise the Lord. Uh, I want to say this, one of the reasons we do communion so much, because I believe communion is one of the greatest safeguards against sickness. Because you keep your heart right, God can protect you. But when your heart is ought against your brother or your sister, it's an avenue for the devil to attack you. Amen. So we take the communion often during these days we're facing, who knows, maybe a permanent thing we do in this church. But we'll see. But anyway, Kim, we love you. Respect you. How long have you served here at the church? I think this will be my 15th year. You're wow. She's an outreach. Give her a hand. 15 years. You know, she comes from Boston. I've been coming here for 17 years. Coming here for 17 years. And uh, she's, uh, she, her famous city is Boston where they make Boston baked beans. I'm just joking. And, uh, but she is a, a trained TV producer. That's her deal. She was on television. Isn't that cool? But now she reaches for people. We love you. Good job. This is Missions Week, and we're going to highlight missions. And I believe this with all my heart that God is moving supernaturally in our young people.
in the morning I had Ben De De Aguera get up here. And he shared how he went to Daniel Kalenda's evangelism conference for five days. He was so touched by that. There are literally thousands of young people coming from around the world. And he's going to sign up for a three-month class. And from that three months, he's going to, you know, he's a very smart kid. But he's going to, when he graduates, he wants to forestall everything and just go full-time evangelism. Daniel Kalenda, who is the protege of Reinhard Bonnke, their goal is to raise 20,000 evangelists next 10 years. Their goal is to get enough evangelists out there at a minimum of 2,000 with tents, with money. Their estimated amount of people coming to Christ around the world will be 100 million. And come on, put your hands together. Put your hands together. Reinhard, Reinhard Bonnke, in his 40 years of ministry, was at about 79, 000, 79 million, which is like incredible still. But when the devil ramps up stuff, the devil's ramping up stuff. You know, you got the, the new economic order coming out of Europe. You're, if, if you read this stuff, these globalists are smoking the strongest weed known to man. Klaus Schwab, the head of the whole thing, he's like Dr. Strangelove from Bond's movie. I mean, it's like, is, is someone writing this script? I tell you what we need to do. I mean, my God, give him a monocle and we got it going on. But we have to understand that we have to fight this with the move of God. And let me say this, God will be outdone by the devil. And these next 10 years are critical. We got like a, about a 10 year run. All hands on deck. Daniel DeToy, who we support, he was going to come over here from South Africa. Remember that? He held the first 40, 50,000 crusade when he was 19. He's 20. He's, he's 21 now. So he couldn't get here. We sent him the money to come here. He said, if you don't mind, I've reassigned your money. I'm in Kenya right now holding a crusade, open door crusade. So we sent him some money. But God's going to raise up men and women, young men and women. And as, an, as a pastor of a church, the year before last, we had 41 mission trips. About a, a quarter to a third of our money goes out to missions. We don't play missions here. We're the real deal. I said, I want to take us to another level. I want to provide people with an avenue of how to get on the mission field for six months or a year. I would like to take young people. If you want to go for a year, we got a year for you. It's all set to go. Some of you people that are in high, that are in high school, you should think about taking a gap year. You graduate high school, take a year in missions. That would be worth eight years of college. And get you trained in things of God. No, really, it's going to be like that. So to do that, I've been trying to get a hold of Dr. Jerry Williamson, who is the president of Go To Nations, one of the most, one of the, one of the most cutting-edge mission agencies in the world today. I've tried for years. I finally got him to come. He had to bump another church to come. But I got him to come to do a seminar, one-day seminar. It's $27 a person to come to this thing. I said, I as the church will pay for it. I'll even buy you lunch. But you want to hear him? Throw up Dr. Richardson up here. He gave a special video just for us. Please show up Dr. Richardson. Dr. Williamson. Everybody reach your hand out. Hi, Pastor Merrick and Linda. And a big hello to all the precious saints there at World Harvest Church. I'm Jerry Williamson, the president of GoTo Nations, and I'm actually speaking to you from my office at the World Headquarters in Jacksonville, Florida. I am so excited to have the opportunity to be with you on March 13th at the Global Pathway Believers Gathering. Now, this is going to be a one-day event that I guarantee you will be eye-opening, heart-moving, and faith-activating. You will walk away with a greater understanding of how you are an important part of God's global plan. Now, along with powerful teaching, after every session, we will have breakout discussion groups, which are always a rich time of interaction with other attendees. There will be plenty of breaks with refreshments and lunch will be served on site. Believe me, we are going to have an incredible time together. Now, another reason you can't miss out on this event is because one of my best friends 
who is a very powerful teacher, will be joining me, and I think you already know who he is. Thank you, Dr. Jerry. We often say at Go To Nations, we're not just doing missions. We are not building a ministry. We are completing a mandate. I'm Craig Keen, Vice President of the Ministries Division. World Harvest Church, our greatest days are just ahead of us. This is the hour we were born for. This is the hour to finish. So join us on March 13th to not only be inspired, but to be equipped and empowered to be the church that God made us to be in the nations. We'll see you there. So here's the deal. They have 800 missionaries around the world. This guy's viewpoint on missions is like you got to get a global vision. He travels the world constantly. He said, I was just in uh, Tanzania. I met with the head of the Assemblies of God. They have 5,000 churches in the one country alone. When he saw this program, he actually went through it. He got so excited because you understand, most churches are not actively involved in missions. It's like the church of the sleepy hollow when it comes to missions. It's a yawn. But he says, what's happened here to that in Tanzania, he said, this program has caught the whole 5,000 church on fire. Every church is sending missionaries. Every church is raising up money. He said, it's absolutely enlivened the church. How many know when you connect with what God's connected with, it will kick fire in your belly and in the house of God. And he says, and he's doing this all over the world. But in America, we need it as well. And this church. So you'll learn how to raise your money. You can be on the field within four to six months fully funded for one year. We've got places all over the world for you to go. This is a way to take one year, two years, half a year. But I need you as a church to say, I want to be a part of it. Even if you don't go for right now, it's information you can put inside your heart and release it for another time. Amen? Amen. But don't forget the date, March the 13th. Glory to God. Now we're going to receive an offering. You know why we're going to receive an offering? Because we give all the money away. Like to where? Well, I just got a call from Myanmar, one of our main missionaries that we bought a big bus and a truck for. Actually, a big, it's, like, it's like a bus truck to combination. And this guy is always winning souls, winning whole villages and towns to Christ. He said, I just want you to know, there's a coup in Myanmar. He said, on Saturday, all internet shut down for the cross the nation. You can't get out. For at least two weeks, if not longer. He said, it's really uh, severe here. People are not without food. So we wired him some some serious money. We got other monies we, we wire around the world on a constant basis. And because Western Union knows me, and I've been tracked by Western Union, and Western Union says we forbid you to do any more money transferring because we feel like you're transferring too much, too fast. So never fear, God is here. We have many stealth ways. We don't know what a right hand is doing, but we've, I had an, an and an NSA guy sitting next to me in a plane, he told me exactly how to do it, when to do it, how to break it up. I got the inside track. I follow that. And with money keeps flowing. Amen. 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 You just got to be smart. We might have to get some very muscular passenger pigeons that could carry stuff. I don't know. But we are not stopping. So we're going to receive today's offering. And we're also, it's a, uh, we receive our tithes and offering, and we also receive our missions offering. If you're on the phone, you click, there it is, click for tithe, scroll down, there's missions, put something on missions. Allow God to use you every single month to do something for missions because it's God's call. Amen. So we're going to receive. Father, thank you for blessing your people as they give. In Jesus' name. Amen. Let's receive.
mention Miami. Miami, the first two weeks of March, we've got two separate teams going down to Miami to canvas Miami. My wife and I will be there. And uh, we're going to learn how to go in groups. I heard that some of they got some patchy places down there in Miami. That's why you moved to Atlanta. Uh, but uh, <laughs> we're going to believe God. And we're going to be working with the tent, revivalists, Ted uh, uh, Jr. and Sr. And it's going to be powerful. So there's just a few more spots open if you want to come. We're pretty full, but we could take a few more. I want you to turn to your Bibles to Hebrews chapter 12. And I have a simple message today, which really the worship... This is great. Brother and sister are in working tandem. This is awesome. Uh, if you go to Hebrews 12, 1 through 4, it's a simple message, but I believe it's needed at the hour that we live in when there's so much confusion out there. Verse 1, it says, Therefore we also, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily ensnares us, and let us run. Everybody say, let us run. It didn't say let us trot let us jog, let us run. With endurance, the race is set before us, looking unto Jesus. Everybody say, looking unto Jesus. Jesus. Say it real loud. One more time. That's the title of the sermon. The author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. For consider him who endured such Hostility from sinners against himself, lest you become weary and discouraged in your souls. You have not yet resisted to bloodshed, striving against sin. Father, make alive the word to our hearts. We ask the help of the Holy Spirit. Give me freedom to deliver the word. Give us ears to hear it. Change us by your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. We are in a faith race. You are in a faith race. The day you were born, you were put on a racetrack. Took you a while to walk. We figured that out. God would give you space for that. But once you get going, you become the age of accountability. God expects you to understand what the plan is. Here's the plan. God has a plan for every life. He has a purpose for every person here today. Heaven knows your story, what it should be. It really is already written out. Your job, my job, is to find it and to run the race that God set before us. And it is a race. It's not a walk. Some people, I remember my dear friend Jennifer Bent, we had a 5K for 10 years. They started from, we started from near our church. We ran around this whole blocks of made up 5K and we came back here. We raised money for missions. The pumpkin run. You remember that? And uh, yes, yours truly won several awards because very few people run at my age. But it's so good <laughs> to come in first and no one else is there because there's no one else there. Very ego building. But anyway... <laughs> she said, listen, running's not good for you. That's what I do. We call it uh, 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 fast walking. And you just walk like, and, we, and I, would, I, I never did it again, but I did it to humor her one time. You cannot pick, both feet cannot be off the, off the ground at the same time. So you have to be like, like this. You never break a sweat. I would never do it again. But for some people, it's good exercise. But it didn't say fast walk. It didn't say jog. It said run. Run means you've got to be fully engaged. Run means you're in this race, and anyone knows anybody about a race, if you've ever run track in high school or college, one of the number one rules of track is that you look at the finish line and never look left or right. Did, they, did your coaches teach you that? Don't look left, don't look right because you do it. But how many parts you kind of watch people? I just watched a video just on Saturday. It was a big old run, like an Olympic thing. And, and the guy who lost, big old guy, he was winning, but he kept doing, he kept looking, he kept looking left and kept looking right, and the Kenyan lady beat his pants off. <laughs> so when you run, you gotta see the finish line. Mr. Bolt from Jamaica, he sees the finish line. For every one stride, it takes the people three. But it, but it doesn't matter as long as you get to the first. He runs with the goal in mind. And here's the person at the goal line, Jesus Christ. Jesus is at the finish line. So really, if you broke it down, life is about running towards Jesus. Can I make it simple? That's what it's about. 
And you might tell your kids, you know what, I want you to get this degree. And we all want our kids to succeed. And nothing wrong with degrees, nothing wrong with work, occupation, nothing wrong with careers. That's all well said and done. But it should always be subservient to the higher call is you run to Jesus. And when you run to Jesus, you run to be like him. Because let me tell you this, he is the target, he is the prize for the whole world. Because when it's all said and done, the only thing that's going to matter is what did you do for him? And how much did you give your life over to him? It's all about Jesus. And it takes faith to get that. Because the Bible says he is the originator. The, actually, it says the author and the finisher. If you drill down those two words, you're in for a big word study. The word author means several things, depending on how you look at it. And it's given different translations in different sections of the word of God. In some words, the same word is used, captain. In some words, the same word is prince. Jesus is called the prince of life. You know why? Because life emanates from him. He doesn't receive life. He is life. Jesus gives life. Originator. The source of your faith is Jesus. That's another, another translation. The source. The originator. The spring. Where it comes out. Jesus is the source of all your faith. And if you notice that he's given in the last, you know, we go through the whole book of Hebrews, chapter 11, which is the whole of fame of all the faith people. But Jesus shows up in the first part of Hebrews 12 to simply say this. I am the number one faith example in the Bible. There's no one has greater exercise of faith than Jesus. And when you say Jesus, he didn't say son of God. It's, it's implied he's the son of man. Jesus the human. Jesus, the one who emptied himself of all of his godly powers and rights and privileges. Jesus became a man. Jesus. You see, he is, he is the, the leader. In other words, use leader. He's the leader. What does the leader do? The first to lead. The first to go. He was the, he was the one that went where we need to follow. And he is our example of faith. Are you out there? Jesus is the epitome of what a man should be. He is the greatest example of manhood on the planet. He was a man's man. Jesus feared no one and nothing. He feared no devil. He feared no political power. I don't care. You could be a Caesar. You could be a pilot. It meant nothing to him. He was 100% fearless. And he says to you and I, be like me. A lot of people say they're fearless, but we move on. So anyway, Jesus is a man's man. He is the author. He is the originator. He's the one. You cannot have any faith without him. He's the one who gives it to you. Number two, he's the finisher. That's another word you can drill down. Finisher means you complete it, meaning it does, it, it, you've ended the growth. You're fully matured. Like fruit that's finally ripe, if it goes any more ripe, it goes from ripe to rotten. I tell you, we don't have any good fruit anymore. They pick it green. And it says some kind of sulfuride gas by the time it gets to you, some old hard thing. I refuse to eat half the fruit. I grew up in Africa. I know what a real mango is. The mangoes they serve are nothing but glorified potatoes. I said, I remember, I'm, I'm tired of eating potatoes when I know what a real mango is. Because they've ripened on the tree. You know what I'm saying? Well, what he says, God wants you to get fully ripe. The goal in life, think about this. This is, this is God talking, not you. Your maker, your creator, the one who made you. The man who put you here. He said, here's the plan. The plan is, is that you run to Jesus. But to do that, you'll need faith. And I'm the source of faith. And I'm the one that will help you mature your faith. So you have complete faith. Faith in what? Faith in who? Faith in him. The life we need to live. Is to grow our faith in Jesus Christ. He is the end game of life. Just gonna make it real simple. Teach your children that. Teach your children that being a missionary for Jesus Christ is stepping up, not a step down. That serving God is the greatest honor you can have. Amen. Because when the roll is called up yonder, you'll be judged by what you did for Him. God could care less about your bank account, your car. And everything else that God wants to bless you with, God, God's not, a, not against them. But, you better, but your heart be, better be for him. Amen? He said, well, I don't know if my heart's for him. You keep coming to church. 
When your possessions suck you away from the house of God, it's time to burn the cabin in the woods. It's, it's time to blow up the house by the sea. You know, people come to me and say, Pastor, look what God's blessed me with. I go in there and say, there's a brand new boat they got. I'd say, well, there's the devil. <laughs> now, if you go boating on the weekdays or boat on Saturdays, but you start boating on Sundays, which they never really do. Where are you? Well, uh, I had uh, uh, boat issues. I pray that God sink the boat. <laughs> you got to stay focused, folks. It's on Jesus. Church is about realigning your focus because the world gets you all messed up, goofed up. You go, you're back to front, upside down, inside out. No wonder you're having a hard time having a good life. Praise God. But we're here to straighten you out in Jesus' name by the power of the Holy Ghost. Amen. And so the whole thing about the word looking at Jesus, I said in the Greek last week, the word actually means looking away to Jesus. Because what you look at at the world, the culture of this generation wants to mold you like never before. Social media. Stuff, information comes at you from all quarters and from your relatives, from your family, from educators, from politicians. And they're all trying to distort your view of life. Just, but you see, the Bible says looking to, away to Jesus, you got to focus on where you're driving. Like they tell you, don't text and drive. Why? Because if you text and you drive, you can't look at two directions at the same time. You're looking at your phone or looking up. How many know you, too many people, you look at your phone a little bit too long, and you know as well as I know, it wasn't for ABS braking, you'd be smashed. <laughs> ABS braking has saved you more than once. Uh-huh. Stop doing that. Put the phone down. Amen. You shouldn't be holding the phone. It should be in a, a magnet. Yeah. She says, she's talking to me now. But anyway, <laughs> hey, I had communion. I'm good. Listen. <laughs> My point is this. You cannot look in two directions at the same time. So listen. When he says, look at me to Jesus, you cannot look and take in the world and at the same time look at Jesus. If you look at Jesus all the time, your heart's full of peace. If you are tore up from the floor up, you're looking at the wrong thing. If you're biting your fingernails and saying, well, what about this? What about that? What about this? Wait, you're looking at the wrong thing. Look at Jesus. Let him consume your life from morning to night. This race is a race of faith. It's a race of faith to run for Jesus, fulfill his commission on your life, and to receive him more and more into your life. You get more of Jesus tomorrow than you had today. That's what it is. That's why this church will always have revival. Because barnacles get on boats. you got to go to the shipyard and get your barnacles scraped off. Why? Because barnacles slow you down. Because you get so, it's so easy to get distracted in life. That's why revival meetings are going to be announcing a bunch more revival meetings. Come, we're going to just stay in revival. We're not backing off. We're not backing off in Jesus' name. We're not backing off. We're going to turn the heat up. While they say, don't meet, mass, distance, stay away. Go in the opposite direction because I don't like that. That's demonic. No, we're going to unmask, come close together, and have more meetings than we ever had before because God's going to show up in the power of the Holy Ghost in Jesus' name. And you know what? The church is going to be the one that's going to run this, this COVID thing off in Jesus' name. We're not going to let this thing, the devil wants to drag it on until Jesus comes. Nope. It's going to be blasted back to hell where it came from. And we're moving forward in the power of the Holy Ghost. I mean, we're the head, not the tail. Amen. Quit listening to the tail. Amen. Because you know what's right below the tail. Don't listen to that. Anyway, but anyway. <laughs> we need, we, we need, I'm sorry, honey. <laughs> we'll take communion again. We'll bring out the cups one more time. <laughs> uh, okay. Okay, listen. I love Jesus because he's a man's man. I love Jesus because he can go from being merciful. So merciful to people. The leper comes to him. No one will get near a leper. But Jesus comes up to him and he says, the leper says, bows down and says, if you will, you can heal me. Jesus lays his hand on the leper and heals him. The blind would come to him. He'd open up their, their blind eyes. Cripple would be healed. Everywhere Jesus is going, he's showing mercy. But to the religious, he doesn't hold back. Shoot. 
you guys are the blind leading the blind. <laughs> you guys are nothing but white washed sepulchers full of dead men's bones. <laughs> you guys go around trying to make a convert just like you and make him twice the son of hell that you are. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Jesus don't play. When it comes to religion, he's going to tell it like it is. And those were acts of love. He's trying to slap them back into reality because they were, on, they were OD'd on the devil's dope. you got to understand how powerful this Jesus is. we got to get him bigger than he is. Our Jesus starts to shrink on us. We keep him in our hip pocket. Jesus, Jesus, sneak him out, make him out. Come and bless this little child. We pour them into plastic forms and stick them on our dash. I don't care if it rains or freezes, as long as I got my plastic Jesus. <laughs> How sad that is. But, sorry, honey, I'm just get back to the Bible. Listen, because uh, she's from the Catholic background. Anyway, uh, from Genesis to Revelation. <laughs> Monday's coming. <laughs> no. <laughs> Actually, my wife and I have a good time together. We, we, we laugh a lot at our house because you either laugh or cry if you're in the ministry. You just, uh, <laughs> just start laughing, praise God, because life is funnier than you ever believe possible <laughs> in Jesus' name. <laughs> Say what now? <laughs> People always go, Pastor. Pastor, what? Have you heard? <laughs> Here we go. You know what? I have. Thank you very much. That goes in the trash too. Amen. <laughs> anyway, have you heard? But let me talk about Jesus. This whole book is about Jesus. Now, I'm not, this is not original. Oh, Robert started this thing off. And he's in heaven now. So he's watching. I want to make sure I give him the credit. <laughs> But in Genesis, God prophesied to the devil, the seed of a woman is going to crush your head. Prophecy number one. And Jesus is founded throughout every book in the Bible. In Genesis, he's the seed of a woman. In Exodus, he's the Passover lamb. In Leviticus, he's the high priest. In Numbers, he's the pillar of cloud by day and the pillar of fire by night. In Deuteronomy... He is like the prophet of Moses. In Joshua, he's captain of our salvation. In Judges, he is our lawgiver. In Ruth, he's our kinsman redeemer. In 1st, 2nd Samuel, he's our trusted prophet. In Kings and in uh, Chronicles, he's our reigning king. In Ezra, he's the faithful scribe. In Nehemiah, he's the rebuilder of broken walls. Has anyone had their walls rebuilt by Jesus? Hallelujah, he's a rebuilder. In Esther, he's our advocate. In Job, he's the ever-living redeemer. Hallelujah. In Psalms, he's the Lord, our shepherd. We don't have to want for a thing. Hallelujah to Jesus. He lets you lie down in green pastures. Leads you, leads you beside still waters and he restores your soul. What a Jesus we have. And then in uh, Ecclesiastes, he's our God. Song of Solomon, he's our lover and our bridegroom. In Isaiah, he is their prince of peace. In Jeremiah... And Lamentations, he's the weeping prophet. In Ezekiel, he's the wonderful four-faced man. In Daniel, he's the Ford, fourth man in the fiery furnace. In Hosea, he's the eternal husband, forever married to the backslider. If you're a backslider here, please don't raise your hand. But if you're a backslider here, Jesus is married to you. In Joel, he's the baptized in the Holy Spirit. In Amos... He's the burden bearer. In Obadiah, he's the savior. In Jonah, he is the foreign missionary, whether he liked it or not. In Micah, he's the messenger with beautiful feet. In Nahum, he's the avenger. In Habakkuk, he's the evangelist pleading for revival. In Zephaniah, he is the Lord Almighty, mighty to save. In Haggai, he is the restorer of our lost heritage. In Zechariah, he is the fountain of everlasting life. And in Malachi, he is the son of righteousness who rises with healing in his wings. Jesus is throughout the Old Testament. Hallelujah. 
But doesn't stop there. In Matthew, he's the Messiah. In Mark, he's the wonder worker. In Luke, he's the son of man. In John, he's the son of God. In Acts, he's the mover of the Holy Ghost through the men and women of God. I'm telling you, we got a mighty Jesus. In Romans, he's a justifier. In 1st and Corinthians, and 2 Corinthians, he is a sanctifier. In Galatians, he's a redeemer from the curse. In Ephesians, he's the whoo, he's the Christ of like unsearchable riches. In Philippians, he's the God of our total supply, of everything we need. In Colossians, he's the fullness of the Godhead bodily. In 1st, 2nd Thessalonians, he's a soon coming king. In 1st, 2nd, 2nd Peter, or T Timothy, let me get it right. He's the mediator between God and man. In Titus, he's the faithful pastor. In Philemon, he's the friend of the oppressed. In Hebrews, he's the blood of the everlasting covenant. Hallelujah. In James, he's the Lord who raises up the sick. In uh, 1st, 2nd Peter, He's the chief shepherd. Hallelujah. And in 1st, 2nd, 3rd John, he is love. In Jude, he's the Lord coming with 10,000 of his saints. In Revelation, he is the king of kings and the Lord of lords. Everywhere you look, you see Jesus. All through the Old Testament, all through the New Testament, this Jesus, hallelujah, he is Noah's rainbow. He is Abraham's ram in the bush. He is Isaac's well. He's Jacob's ladder. He's Moses' rod. He's David's slingshot. He's Hezekiah's sundial. Hallelujah to Jesus. Christ is the head of the church and he's risen from the dead. That's who we serve and that's who we celebrate. Glory be to God. If you're in a dark valley, Jesus is the bright and morning star. He's a lily in the valley. He's the rose of Sharon. He is the counselor. He is the everlasting father. He is the prince of peace. And of his government there should be no end. Hallelujah to Jesus. Who is he? Is Jesus of Nazareth, the son of the living God. Hallelujah. Who is he? Jesus humbled himself from the, from the throne in glory. He took on humanity. He took on human flesh. And he humbled himself. And he became obedient, even to obedience of death. But he went about doing good, healing all the oppressed of the devil. For God was with him. He died on a cruel cross. He went to a hell's grave. And he rose again from the dead. And the Bible said he ever lives to make intercession for you and me. When John the Revelator saw him, he saw him with his white hair, glowing eyes, glowing face, his feet like burnished bronze. And he, and, and, he, and he spoke to him. He said, I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. I was the one that was dead, but I'm alive forevermore and have the keys of hell, death, and the grave. We got to make much of Jesus. He's the one that said, I and God the Father are equal. And he said, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. You're talking about the great majesty of Jesus Christ. The church has minimized him. The church has apologized for him. The church has pushed him in the corner. But I'm telling you what, we need to elevate him and we need to make him the center of our life. And we need to run to him every day. Jesus, I love you. I want more of you. You're the focus of my life. But people that don't love him will push him aside. They don't go to church because he's not the center of their life. He's a side issue. If you hang with people like that, they will make you just like them. They'll minimize the things of Jesus. They'll minimize church. They'll minimize the things of the kingdom because they're not looking at what they need to look at. They look at the things of this world, their house, their family, their cars, all that's temporary. It's leaving. There's one thing needful. is Jesus. Why well, I got Jesus, you don't have enough of him. How do I know? By watching you. We minimize the one who did everything for us. We don't understand who he really is. We got to pay attention these last days. Don't let the world turn your head to look at things that are not of God. Only turn to Jesus. Your cry should be, I want you, Jesus. I want more of you. I want more of Jesus tomorrow than I had today. That's why the church must live in revival. Complacency, comfort, religion are killers. They blow the fire out. And the world looks at Christians and say, no, thank you. But if they could see a church on fire with the presence of God upon it, they would run to Jesus. Because Jesus shines, but he doesn't listen to your excuses or your family's excuses. In these last days, and these are the last days, these are the last days. 
pay attention. Don't be goofy. Don't let other people make you goofy. God's going to refine the seed that's been whittled out from the chaff. We've got to get hotter. We've got to get white hot so the gifts of God can flow. I'm going to be speaking about holiness in the days to come. If you don't like it, there's another church that here that will tell you how you can live any way you want to and still make it to heaven. Princess, maybe. We've got to pay attention. The anointing is going to grow. The power of God is going to grow. Demons will fly out people coming into this property. They'll just, they'll be delivered. You have somebody convoluting on the concrete. What's, what's going on? Oh, that's mine. It's another deliverance. It's just part and parcel of this church. We don't serve soy lattes here. We don't have skinny jean preachers with, with the bar stools. We share the power of the Holy Ghost. And we don't apologize. We're not mealy-mouthed about the things of God. But we're bold. We're fearless. What if they kill you? So what? You have to sign. To go to Daniel Clinton, you have to sign. You have to sign it. I'm willing to be a martyr for Christ. Otherwise, you can't come. If you're not willing to die, get off the boat. You're, kind of, you're, you're just too small fry. Well, no, I gotta survive. No, you don't have to survive. I didn't know it would go this way. It's a little bit different than the first service. Maybe somebody needs it out there. Praise the Lord. Everybody say amen. amen. Hallelujah. Whoo, Jesus. So here we are. He said he's the author and finisher of the faith. He's the example of faith. And faith, we must have faith. Do you know why? Because the, word, the world needs to be changed. And the world is changeable. And your faith and my faith, we can change the world. Faith is the most untapped power on the planet. Untapped. We're just beginning to learn to tap into it. But trust me. There's no limit to how far you can go with your faith. Jesus said you could have, have the faith as a seed of, of a, like a mustard seed, which is a tiny seed. And he said if you had that much faith, you could tell this, move, this mountain to get up and go. Think about this. Faith stopped fire from burning the children of Israel. Faith caused the sea to divide. Faith stopped the water from coming from heaven for three and a half years. Faith, release it again. Well, I thought atomic power is the most important. I thought the strongest thing is the atomic bomb. No, that's nothing concerning faith. Faith can make a bomb go dead in midair. Faith is ultimate power. Faith in God. And so when Jesus says, I'm the author of this, he says, I need you to get out of the natural world. You need to get into the faith world. But to get in the faith world, number one, you've got to see this book right here, the B-I-B-L-E. It's the word of God and it's absolute truth. You can't equivocate on one verse. You have to have that in order for you to step into the faith realm. The faith realm says what God says is true. And I'm going to exercise my faith in what this book says. Period. Then you begin to step over into that spiritual realm. And we know the spirit produced the natural. It's the spirit that, re that created everything you see, touch, and feel was created by the spirit. The Bible says God spoke everything. He said, I believe in the big bang. So do I. Earth be, bang, there it was. <laughs> Planets be, bang, there they were. Actually, because I'm a science guy, science major, they'll even admit that all the geological record, if it's truly examined with a critical eye, shows instantaneous introduction of life with huge gaps, starting with marine. It follows Genesis. But you've got to get to the place in faith where you walk above what your eyes see and what your fingers touch. Moses walked in that faith realm. He stepped over. You look at these greats, they stepped over into the faith realm. It says in the book of Romans said that Abraham, in his walk, he used the words, the steps of faith of Abraham. I like that. The steps of faith. Because we understood that when he first started off, he wasn't the greatest example of faith. 
but he stepped up and stepped up and stepped up. Think about this. When God told Abraham to go offer up Isaac on the mountain, the Bible said he left very early in the morning. Do you know why? Sarah was still asleep. Can you imagine a Sarah at 9 o'clock? Uh, this, is, this is our final breakfast. Sarah, Abraham, are you sure you're God? No, he was a man of faith. I got to get to get him before my wife gets up. The Bible said he took off early in the morning. They didn't know where they were going. He was the only one that knew. And then later on when Isaac's finally go up the mountain carrying the wood, he said, uh, uh, Dad, yeah, uh, where's the sacrifice here? God will provide a sacrifice, my son. Great step of faith. Steps of faith. He operated by the spirit, not by the natural. Hebrews said he knew that if Abraham was forced to kill his son, that God would raise him up. He knew that. But it's still not easy to do. It was your only son. He took the knife. As he's coming down, God said, Abraham, Abraham, don't kill the child. The ram in the bush. That's Jesus to you and I. We should have been sacrificed on the cross. But Jesus was that sacrificial lamb. That's why he's Abraham's ram. Hallelujah. Faith. It's so important to have it. That's why he's the, because you understand, if you want to move with God, it has to be through faith. Because every blessing of God comes through faith. Your salvation of your soul came through faith. The baptism of the Holy Spirit. If you don't have it, we have a service here right here. Rex Ruiz will lead you in it. We'll get you all filled with the Holy Ghost. You need, to be, you need to be filled with the Holy Ghost and speak in other tongues. Oh, you said it from a pulpit? I'll say it all, all day long. You know why? I'm not ashamed of the Holy Ghost. I know some churches are so ashamed. Uh, well, uh, we have another experience. Uh, it's in the back. Uh, slide through that door. And uh, we'll just usher you in there. No one will know. Oh, we know here. Jesus is the baptized in the Holy Ghost. What is that? He'll fill you with his power. He'll give you a prayer language you never learned. It'll be God praying through you for you, and you never know anything about it. But it suppresses your head. Now, this blows the Baptist mind. If you're Baptist, this will blow your ever-living Baptist mind. The Methodist minds get fried too. Presbyterian minds. I was a Presbyterian. God's chosen and frozen. I went to a church, the Glacier of Atlanta. Great church, but my God, if you had any Holy Ghost showing up, they would hose it right out the door. But now, too late. Got touched with the fire. Hallelujah. My Presbyterian people, when I was a young man, I would preach the fire. Got baptized in the Holy Ghost. That's dangerous to get a Presbyterian on fire. Dangerous. We've been cold so long, but once we get hot, we got ground to catch up on. I just started preaching like a man of fire. And, they, and the preacher came to me and told me finally, he said, you know what, young man, what's that? <clears throat> we have to relieve you of your position because I'm telling you, you need to move along. He said, one day, you're going to have your own church. You can preach what you want. I said, thank you. And here I is, right here. Here I is. Hallelujah. Okay. No whole bars. You didn't hire me. You can't fire me in Jesus' name. God call me. I want to digress. This sermon's going everywhere. Help me, Jesus. But let me tell you what. Uh, <laughs> but faith walk. Oh, hallelujah. You see, it flows out of the word of God. Where does faith come from? From the word of God. What's that? Romans, Romans 10, 17. It says it comes from the word of God. Faith comes from the book. Well, that means you've got to read the book. Hello. I've got to read the book. I'm going to listen to the book. I've got to absorb the book. I'm going to let the book get inside of me. I'm going to have John 15, 7. says, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, you'll ask whatever you will and it shall be done unto you. It's Jesus you want. He said, let me tell you what. It's growing your faith in me. That's what the race is about. Add to your faith. That's why church is a great place to be, to add to your faith Sunday morning. You're adding to your faith. You leave here another level of faith. You've got to get along with God. You've got to get along with Him on a daily basis. The amount of time you spend with God is the amount of faith you get on the inside of you. The more, the more, the more that you read, that you rehearse faith. I like to fill my world with faith. When I'm driving down the road, I'm listening to faith. I like to read books on faith. I read the Bible. I will study. I have the privilege of studying and praying. That's my job. Hallelujah. I love it. So I pray, study, study, pray, act it out. Let me tell you what. You build your faith. Your faith grows. 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 It's the most important thing. 
I wouldn't be here without faith. When you have a doctor point his bony finger at you, wearing a white coat, says, doctor, <laughs> with a stethoscope. I don't know, I think it's intimidation. They all wear coats and stethoscope. What, what, what? You never hardly do anything with them, they just walk around. <clears throat> yes, sir. He said, sir, you have 90 days to live. You're about to die. 90 days. And you need to check in the hospital right now. You don't have long on this earth. I said, I'm not checking in. What? I'm disobeying orders. What? What are you going to do? I'm going to, a, I'm going to a healing conference. What? I took off for a healing conference. He said, you need to start your treatment. I said, not ready. I'm going to get my faith going. Remember that one week, two weeks, the guy was getting frantic. I thought, that, I thought he had a nervous wreck on my hands. I am here 25 years later, healed in Jesus' name. Now watch this. That doctor, bless his loving soul, I witnessed to him. He had a PhD in philosophy, and then he got his doctorate in oncology. Smart, 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 smart. I'd share Christ with him. Now, when I was healed, he would test me. He just couldn't believe. Let me tell you what. I was so far gone. By the time I started treatment, I had like, I just a, like 30 days to live. He just knew it was in there. And he was going to find it. Year after year. Man, they put me upside down, inside out, testing this way, that way. It's got to be in there somewhere. I said, Doc, I'm healed. Finally, I had to walk away from the doc. I said, this doc is not a believer. And he will not believe I'm healed. So I had to leave him. I said, bye. I had another doc. I said, what you, what, what's all the testing? I said, I don't know what his problem is. And then I found out the poor doc, he died. I'm not, I don't wish it on anybody. I, pr I trust he made it. But the point is, your faith will keep you on the planet. Your faith, let me tell you what, your faith. <laughs> Listen, let me, let me tell you what, your, your, your faith. That's why you got to look at Jesus. Turn away from the, all the world. Turn away from the news. Just look at Jesus. It's about Jesus. Will of the world. You know what the world is? A puppet on a string. Really. Really. Well, I'm Dr. So-and-so. I'm the head of a. Really. God says all the nations are like a bust, a drop in a bucket. All of them put together. 200 plus nations, like a drop. Like dust on the scales. You know what God says? Impress me. You don't. Because he's coming soon. He's going to kick butt and take numbers. Do you understand who the, that's right, little brother's coming? All these globalists, they don't realize what's happening. A giant hammer's coming down. But we know the reality. We've got to live it out. But you can't do it in the natural. You can't, it won't work. You've got to be a woman or a man of the book. And you can't say, I don't have fear. Show God you don't have fear. A lot of people say, I, I tell you, I'm a faith person. I went to Tulsa, Jerusalem, Citadel of Faith. I went there for a week to help a man start a church. I looked up all the churches. They call them Faith This, Faith International, Faith of the Word, Faith of the This, Faith, Faith. I'm going, closed, 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 closed. I don't know what happened. My brother Hagen died. I think they all quit. You got to get serious. It's not time to play church. The devil wants to, I'm telling you what, he wants to take you out with all the trash out there. He wants you to be a liver nervous wreck. He wants you to look at every day, oh my God, what's happening today? I don't want, you don't tell me the news. Yeah, it's really bad out there. That's the, that's the news. Thank you. I got it. But I want the news of what Jesus is doing on the earth today. Amen. 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 And so let me say this. I got to go because it's later than it's ever been. You remember the story in Matthew's Gospel, chapter 14, starting in verse 22. I've been to the Sea of Galilee. It's about 13 feet in length and about 8 feet wide. I mean, 18 mi 13 miles by 8 miles. Did I say feet? Um, my faith is shrinking it down too far. I think I'm hanging around. 
But eight miles. So when you stand at the Sea of Galilee, you can look out. It doesn't look that long. It's, it, everything is shrunk. If you've been there, you know what I'm talking about. So Jesus tells the 12 disciples, get in the boat and go across. He's going to stay behind, dismiss the crowd and pray. They said he had to constrain them. I mean, they didn't want to do it. He constrained them. So they get in the boat and here they go. So Jesus goes up at the top of the mountain. He prays. So do the calculations. He said that in the middle of the lake, it had to be about four miles out. That's a piece. It said the wind came and the waves came and they were in a terrible storm. And it said they strained at the oars. Other, the Gospels did have other episodes of the same kind. Give little illustrations about a little bit what they were doing. The waves were coming over the boat. So Jesus decides he's going to go see him. So he just takes off walking. Now these are burly fishermen and business people. Then all of a sudden, I get this, they didn't know who it was because it's too dark and murky. They see something like, did you see something? No. A little bit less. And they're rowing and then for sure they see something. Peter looks at Andrew. I see a ghost. The word ghost in the Greek, phantom. Ba 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 ba. Can you imagine what Peter did? Row, baby, row, row faster, row faster. Oh, for a Mercury outboard right about now. Row faster. Can you imagine? <laughs> row. And he comes, don't, 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 don't close. They don't know who it is. They, they don't. He, it's too dark. They don't know who it is. They're frantic now. So while they're screaming. Jesus speaks as a voice. All, all they hear is the voice. <laughs> he said, don't be afraid. That's where they picked up the speed even higher. <laughs> the boy, now he's talking. He's walking and talking. Don't be afraid. It is I, which actually in the Greek is I am. But it's God. Don't be afraid. I am. Oh, you of little faith. Now think about this. It wasn't the violence of the wind or the raging of the waters that was threatening the disciples. It was their lack of faith. Little faith, big problem. Watch this now. That tells me. It's not the circumstances we face that's the issue. It's the faith in your heart. Because the faith in your heart can overcome any issue. So we cannot look at circumstances. You can't look at your emotions. You can't look at your family situation. You can't look at the political situation. When Martha and Mary's sisters were serving Jesus and Mary sat at the feet of Jesus and Martha's running around and she remonstrated, Jesus, tell Mary to help me. Jesus said, no, Martha. Martha, Martha. Looking for us, trouble, so many things. He said, Mary He said, has chosen the better part. One thing is needful, and Mary has chosen the better part. Can I say this in our life? One thing is needed. Faith in God, in your heart. That means you must put the word of God in you. That's the issue. So here's Peter. He still doesn't know who it is. They're looking into the dark. They hear a voice. If it's you, may still be the phantom. If it's you, tell me to walk on the water. Knowing that it would take a miracle to make that happen. They're waiting, waiting. And they hear this word. Come. 
The 11 looking at Peter. Okay, big, big, big pants. You're the one that said that. If it's you, come. Are you going to come? What are you, you, you going to do? You, what? Yeah, you. He said, come. He still doesn't know who it is. It could be the phantom. It could be Jesus. So think of the guts. He had to get out. Now get this. I can picture this. He gets his one foot over the gun of the boat. And he puts it down. And he goes, his, his foot disappears about a foot. And then he hits something solid. Is it a stone? What is that? He moves it. Still solid. Still solid. His faith rises. Now he's there. This is how it went. But a foot deep in water. This is how he walked. You got a little more faith. Now he's getting into it. He's walking to Jesus. And now he can see Jesus. He's looking at him. He's walking on water. He's superseding the law of gravity. Then the Bible says, he took his eyes off him. This is real big. He took his eyes off him. He took his eyes on the waves. He saw the boisterous. If you look it up in the Greek, it says the waves were so strong, they're going, they were powerful to go over the boat. The boat was taken in water. They were powerful waves. And then he began to sink. The word in the Greek means he began to drown. He's going down. I mean, he's feeling death come at him. And he screams, Jesus, help me. And Jesus, in an instant, reached his hand and pulled him out. Little faith Peter, what do we learn from this? It's the faith is the key. That's why he's the author of faith. That's why the Bible says, fight the good fight of faith, lay hold of eternal life. Every fight in life is a faith fight. Period. Don't get mad at me. Don't get mad at the people. You don't get mad at people. They want to blame people. People live in the victim world. Yeah, I tell you, it's him. It's him. No, 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 it's your faith. Quit blaming people. No one's giving me a break. No, it's your faith. And so what we can understand this, you've got to understand when you take in Jesus, the more you take him in. Take him till his presence comes over you. Take him in until you capture his purpose for your life. He has a purpose for your life. You take him until you get empowered by his Holy Ghost. Then all of a sudden, life becomes a joy. It's from faith to faith. It's from strength to strength. Therefore, you can live in a constant state of rejoicing. It's another way of life. But you have to keep your eyes on him. From the moment you get up. There's a song we used to sing. I want to close with it, but you may not know it, but I'll try it. I reach out for these oldies but goldies. Heather, I might have to reach for you. But it goes like this. Let's talk about Jesus. The King of kings is he. The Lord of lords. Mighty for all eternity. The truth of life, the way. Is that right? No, no. The life, the truth. I'm messing up. I got it the first time. The truth, the life, the way. Da, 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 da. I know this song. Let's talk about Jesus more and more. But it's a song about talking about Jesus. Let's talk about Jesus. Let's talk about him when you get up. Let's talk about when you go to bed. Let's talk about Jesus. Let's talk about the wonder of his person. Let's talk about the greatness of all that he is. And that he gives us faith. And that all we need is faith in him. I don't want to be called little faith. I want to be a centurion. Oh, you of great faith. Syrophoenician woman. Oh, you of great faith. This is a house of faith. This is where you get your faith built up. Amen. Amen. Look to him. Don't get your eyes off Jesus. And watch your life rise with power and purpose and presence of the Holy Ghost. Let's pray. Father, I thank you that you've called us to a life of, of looking to you. Our life must be about looking to Jesus. From the time we get up to the time we go to bed. It's about you, Jesus. It's about your majesty. It's about your glory. 
You became our substitute. You became like us. You took on human flesh and bore our sins on the tree. You bore our sicknesses. You bore our poverty. You bore everything that's lacking in our life and you broke its power. And now all things are possible to them that believe. Thank you, Jesus, for ever interceding for us in heaven. And Lord, we want to be about you. We want to be Jesus' people unashamed, bold, fearless, filled with purpose. We know what we're doing. We know where we're going. We know why we're doing it. And we refuse that any devil or any other people to pull us off our track. We'll not go to hell for anybody. We're not going to lose our purpose for anybody. people don't like it, they just have to lump it. We're not here to placate people. We're here to pl please Jesus. We'll be like Enoch who walked with God and pleased Him. And God took him. A man of faith. We want to please you, God, in the way we, way we live our lives. We want about you. We want to be about you. Looking to you. So, Father, I want to pray for everyone here today. You're here today in either one or two categories. You've never met Christ, but now is the time you can. Or you be honest with your life. Christ is really not the center of your life. Many things have come to crowd Him out. It's very easy to happen. Life is busy. Life is fast. And we make quick decisions, and sometimes those decisions, every decision takes us further away from the plan of God for our life the purpose of God and be consumed with Him our faith begins to wane but church is a place we readjust our hearts we get right with God we get changed if you're here today you say pastor I'm one of those two categories either I need to receive Christ or I want to make Jesus the epicenter of my life I'll repent of not doing that. I want to make a change today. If that's you, without hesitation, put your hand up. That's me. Yeah, that's me. Pray for me. Pray for me in Jesus' name. Now, I know there's more than that. First service was filled with hands. I've got one hand in this crowd. Someone's not listening to the sermon. I'll tell you what. You cannot get further with God if you, religion is believing you're something when you're not. I'm a 10 when you're a 2. You got to get straight with God. You got to get real with Him. That's where we have breakthrough in our heart. We should be quick to repent, quick to ask God for the retouch of His presence upon our life. It's important. Otherwise, church turns into a game, a nice sermon we hear, but we go out living exactly the same way we left, the way that we came in. There's no change. That's what religion does to you. But if you want real reality, you really want God, you've got to get real. And you've got to get broken in your heart. You can't be all stuck up with your pride and how good you are. You've got to get broken to the base of God. I've got to have more of you. That's the whole essence of revival. I've got to have more of you. The day you arrive is the day you die. So I'll do it one more time. I won't do it again. I'm not asking anybody to come forward. It's just between you and God. It's a, it's, it's a God thing. It's what you do in your seat before God, your heart. Is Jesus really the middle of your life? Can you come closer? To the things you can do to bring Him more focused in your life. If that's what you want, say, yeah, that's me, Pastor. And then raise your hand. Say, that's me. That's what I want. That's what I want. That's what I want. That's what I want. That's a lot better. Thank you, Jesus. That's what I want. That's what I want. I want it. I want it. Now, if you, if you raise your hand, just going to do one more thing. Just stand right where you are and I pray for you right where you are. All over this congregation, just stand. In the balcony, just stand. Stand for Jesus. God's going to touch you. Father, everyone standing, I pray for them right now. Lord, you're the one that knows the hearts of men. You 
you search the hearts of men. And all these last days, you're seeking, seeking our hearts that'll be, that are towards you, that want to seek you. They want to be God seekers, not world seekers. They want to seek you above everything else in their life. They want to make you number one. They want to make you center. In the name of Jesus. Now raise your hands, those who are standing. I pray for you. I pray the fire of God upon your life. I pray an anointing that will burn in you for a hunger for the things of God, a hunger for the Word, and a hunger for Jesus. I pray God will clean your glasses, so to speak, so you see it clearly. Say this out loud. Everybody say it together, especially those standing. Say, oh God, today I repent and I turn my heart to you. I repent of distractions. And allowing things to come in my life to push you out. But I really do love you, Jesus. But I want to love you with a greater fervor. A greater passion. And put everything out of my life. Every sin. Every weight. Every distraction. I want to get radical. I push them out of my life. But oh Lord, send the fire of God. And burn in me. Give me a fire. Give me a passion for the things of God, for the Word of God, and a compassion to help the hurting, to reach the lost. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Let's all stand up, shall we? Hallelujah. Bambu hosikila mama maso. You're knocking. You're seeking. The Lord tells me you will find me. The breakthrough is coming. The doctor shall lift you. The reality of His presence is coming to you. Every work of hell arrayed against your life is broken. He leaves you. Out! In Jesus' name. Let the fire of heaven touch this young man. The purpose of God shall be fulfilled in your life, I prophesy. What God ordained from you from the birth to now. God's going to undo every work of hell and bring about total freedom. You, sir, are at the right place at the right time. Asamoro Praise you, Jesus. Asabadababa. A sister, God's on you. You want His presence. You're very sincere. God's going to visit you. I'm telling you, you're going to have visitations from the Holy Spirit. He's going to come because you've been crying out for Him. He's going to come and meet you. He's going to show you things for your future for this year. Some of the things you've been wanting to do, you're going to see yourself, it's going to step over. You're going to step and begin to do it. It won't be a thought and an image. It'll be reality. Jesus, that fire falls on you in Jesus' name. Touch her, Jesus. Touch her. Touch her. Touch her. Touch her. Touch her. Touch you're stepping over. You're stepping over, Chip. You know what I hear? You're going to be preaching again. Are you ready for that? It's going to happen. No, 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 no. It's going to happen. 
Souls are going to come to Christ through you. Raise your hand. I pray this. Lord, let the fresh fire of God be on them. Let the fire be on Hannah's life. Fire! 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 Come here, you two. These are his children. Ba, 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 sakoshikia. Now, these young men are serious. They're very mature for their age. You don't play, do you? You're serious for God, aren't you? Raise your hands. God's anointing young people in these last days with supernatural fire. They expect it to come upon you. God's going to use you. You carry a mantle from your father. You understand that? He's been raising you. It's tutoring you like students for Jesus. That's what's going on. Raise your hands. You're going to catch it. But I release this fire on both these young men. Anoint them, Lord, to be firebrands for you. Shoot them in the hosts that need to hear. Let them be anointed. Anoint their lips. Let that fire burn in them. They cannot contain, but they must preach this gospel. They must go. They must run. And they will run and finish the course well. Fire! You're set apart for God. Never forget it. Special day today. Zamahoti Lama Masakaya. Raise your hands. Touch him, Jesus. He won't ever touch you again. You understand that? No sickness. He won't touch you again. Ron, now listen. I see a, a shield of like the blood of Christ all over you. In Jesus' name. Fire! Fire! Shala Sarakoya. Now listen, it's going to happen faster than you think. Promotion comes from the Lord. And as you stay in track with the Holy Ghost, God's going to be promoting you. Promoting you financially, promoting you spiritually. You look back at the end of this year, you go, I can't believe the growth I've had. It's like I'm a different person. Fire! Fire. In Jesus' name. It's good to see you. You know it's dangerous to be on the front row. I love you. Raise your hands. Now I hear the Lord say, God's lifting confusion. Heaviness and I mean some. You mind thinking this, you mind thinking that. By the anointing of God, God sets your mind at peace. God's got a purpose and a plan. As you surrender everything to Him, He will lead you and guide you to that perfect place. There's rest in Him. No struggle. He just wants to put you in that place of rest. Let everything go. But what about this? Let it all go. Let Jesus have everything. Every relationship. Lay it all down. Lay all the past down. Lay everything down. That's His peace coming on you. He saturates you now with His presence. He's going to guide and direct your path in the way you need to go. I'm telling you, God's all over this young man. In fact, God's going to raise you up, young man, to be a spokesman for Him. He's going to undo all that stuff. Watch what happens. I'm getting a tent. I'm going to put it down in Enterprise. We're going to go out for weeks. Sammy Parks asked me to do it. I'm going to join with him. I'm looking for young men to go down and preach. I'm going to pick on everybody. People like Keelan. I'm going to just throw them out there. I said, it's preaching time, brother. Now, we're going to get, but it's going to be the young. Listen to me, you young people. You're going to run. You're going to tear the kingdom of the devil up. You know, you understand that? It's payback time. All the trash you've given me, all the lies you've told me to buy, it's, it's new day. <laughs> I want to help you go on a mission trip. I'll pay you to go. I don't do it for everybody. Don't, no, there's, there's no line here. I just realized who you are. Mom, I love you. You've got an incredible children. Lord, I pray for my sister. 
Touch her. Touch her eyes. Touch her eyes. Touch her, Jesus. Touch her body. I speak strength to you. I speak strength to all the... I undo the work of hell. I read against you. I break the power of darkness off you. I break everything. It's broken in Jesus' name. The Holy Ghost comes. I promise you this. You're going to see things of strength come into you, to your body. God reverses some things in your body. He begins to reverse it. Hallelujah. He loves you. Hallelujah. Bambaha Takaya. David, you got prayed for by the man of God. You got prayed for by the man of God. He said your brain is being shifted. Remember that? Don't lose that. Many healings, they come by degree. Raise your hands. Lord, in Jesus' name. Let it come more, 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 more. Complete restoration. Raise your hands. God's, let me tell you this. You're going to defy the devil. It's a new day for you. I hear the Lord said, the snake that bit Paul's hand, shake it off. You've got bigger fish to fry. You've got a purpose. You've got calling. God's hands on you. Lord, in Jesus' name, just release your fire upon my dear sister. Let there be a makeup for the f everything the devil's done. May there be an outpouring. Come here, Brooke. You and I are friends. Raise your hands. I pray over you. I pray over your mind. I pray over you. The touch of heaven. Loose it. That anointing on you. Does everything, undoes everything the devil planned. Everything. You're going to be a great woman of God. Your mind will be sharp. You shall know where you're going. It's going to be. God wonderful. Hallelujah. Now listen, I know the time is an element. I recognize that. I just if you're a guest here, we are positively not a one-hour dry cleaning service. That is a church down the road. But let me say this, if I can be honest with you. My heart was touched with this revival two weeks. And I always struggle with it because I feel the power of God come on me. I said, I want time to minister to people. Uh, and so if you allow me time, I just want to have more ministry time for people. But it will not always be an hour, an hour and a half. Somebody may go, you know, we're hitting on, what is it? But if you'll flow with me, understand, I'm, I'm not keeping us here for the sake of keeping us here. I'm keeping us because I feel God. I feel His presence and how much He loves His people. God loves you so, so much. And I'm praying for this. this is, I'm gonna be on the Wednesdays, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be speaking on how to flow in the gifts. I want our church to step over. We need, you know, in the early days of the charismatic movement, we had far more flow of the gifts in the body and slowly it died because we didn't have structure. We had a lot of weirdness would happen. You know, people up there prophesying three-eyed frogs. God don't make three-eyed frogs. Like, yeah, please sit down. And so it's the error stopped the truth. But there is the truth. But I know this is about the gifts. As the gifts flow, the anointing is released. And I want to see it happen in this house. I want to see us step into miracles with everybody flowing in it. Everybody flowing. Does that make sense? We're going to be a supernatural church. Not making any apologize for it. Not, we're not going to apologize for it. We're going to be a church that raises up champions and we're going to loose them to the nations of the world. We're going to be a church that's going to, that's going to loose ministries. They're going to step into what they're called to do. I, and, and I want to, you know my biggest fear? I want to get out of the way, Holy Spirit. I want to get out of the way. This is not my church. It's your church. I want to get, I want to fade in the background. I want Jesus to take over. I, that's my heart. 
And so we're going to continue praying, fasting, revival, press in. Uh, all here, I'm not backing off, backing down for one single thing. But to do that, I can't listen to other preachers. All the preachers say, you're crazy, you're out to lunch, you're this, you're this, you're, you're, you're unmasked, you're unsafe. That's okay. I mean, you, you run your life the way you want to run it. But I'm going to follow what I feel like God tells me to do. Does that make sense? Now you can wear a mask here. We, we know, wear masks, stay far, whatever is comfortable to you. Do you understand that? We understand that. Everyone has different conditions. I totally get it. But we're going to say dismiss right now. Father, bless the people as they go. Let the anointing rest on them mightily. Let them have a supernatural week. And let the fire be burning in their belly as they leave to touch a world that needs you. Let us leave looking at you. In Jesus' name. Amen. If you're a first-time guest, we have a, if you go out these doors to the left, there's a reception area right down over there. They'll lead you there. God bless you. We'll gladly take you there.